Small-sided games are widely used in football, often from a technical and tactical perspective. However, in recent times, research has been directed towards the physical outputs gained in small, medium and large-sided games. It is now common practice to assess training and match demands by GPS devices, and this may include the analysis of external loading such as total distance covered. Furthermore, practitioners may also collect markers of internal load such as heart rate or RPE for analysis. In fact, small-sided games have also demonstrated uh, similar enhancements in aerobic fitness when compared to high-intensity interval training or running. Previous research has demonstrated that manipulating variables for small-sided games such as pitch size, player numbers, whether goalkeepers are included, or technical constraints such as one touch, two touch, man for man, will alter the physical demands and the outputs from players. For example, increasing pitch size and reducing player numbers has demonstrated an increase in total distance, high intensity running distance and sprint distance. On the other hand, reducing pitch size while increasing player numbers has shown to increase the amount of touches on a ball that a player has but as the players don't have the space to move as much, high speed running and sprinting is reduced alongside total distance, with the possible higher accelerations and decelerations making up the volume. Therefore, manipulating pitch dimensions, timings, player numbers and so on can elicit different physical and physiological responses for the training session or drill. This is, a, this is an important and sometimes overlooked part of the session design, drill selection and the training process, which is arguably what physical preparation coaches are trying to influence the most. In this study, 25 Italian Serie A players participated and data was collected from the competition periods over two seasons. The drill data analysed was either with goalkeepers, ranging from 5 to 5 to 10 v 10, and without goalkeepers, from 3 v 3 to 10 v 10. The aim of this study was to find the area per player that could be used to replicate match demands on players and differentiate the area per player as per playing position. Key metrics used in this study were total distance in metres, total high intensity distance greater than 15 kilometres per hour, total sprint distance greater than 24 kilometres per hour. These metrics were then normalised as a relative distance covered in one minute, metres per minute for analysis. Accelerations and decelerations, those greater than two metres per second squared, were also normalised in metres per minute. Metabolic power, expressed as watts per kilo per player, was also collected. While it can be difficult to quantify the exact energy costs, metabolic power has been proposed as a means to quantify the energetic demands of activities such as frequent axles and decels. Using the metabolic power approach in combination with the speed threshold metrics may give a better assessment of intermittent running performance in team sports, hence the use of this method by the authors. These key metrics were collected by means of 10 Hz GPS unit placed between the shoulder blades of each player. What is unique about this study is that a multi-camera system was used to collect locomotor data during official matches instead of GPS, and the interchangeability between the GPS and motion tracking system needed to be calculated. This was achieved by playing a 10-minute simulator game in the stadium using both the GPS and motion tracking system simultaneously and then using a calibration equation for each locomotor activity to compare the two different data captures. The area per player was calculated in meters squared, which would equate to the length times the width of the pitch used divided by the player numbers. For example, a 10, v 10, me 10 by 10 meter pitch for a 2v2 would be equal to an area per player of 25 meters squared per player. For this research, participating goalkeepers were not included in the calculation of the area per player. However, a key finding of this research was that when goalkeepers are included in the small side of games, the area per player needs to be increased to replicate the game demands. One novel finding of this research is that the higher the playing area per player, 
the higher the speed threshold. So if the area per player is increased, it is likely that total distance, total high intensity running and total sprint distance will all increase too, therefore increasing the demands on the player. In essence, the bigger the space per player, the higher the locomotive demands. As demonstrated in this paper, a high speed running load to replicate match demands without goalkeepers was achieved at 166 metres squared per player. However, once goalkeepers are introduced to the area, uh, sorry, introduced, the area per player changes to 262 metres squared to gain the high speed running load required to replicate the match demands. Interestingly, to achieve sprint distance congruent with the match demands, the area per player is approximately 300 metres squared per player with or without goalkeepers. Another finding from this study was that while centre-backs have the lowest area per player, centre-forwards and centre-midfielders need a greater area per player to replicate match demands. The authors note that by understanding the appropriate area per player to elicit match external load demands across physical metrics that they've used, practitioners may be able to plan small-sided games with specific performance objectives in mind. It is also noted that previous research has suggested an area per player of approximately 311 metres squared was able to replicate the high-speed match demands of match play in a game of goalkeepers. The relative playing area of an official game is approximately 340 metres squared per player. In turn, this may contribute to injury prevention for players with a greater protection against non-contact injuries and leads the authors to suggest that the manipulation of the area per player in small-sided games to gain the desired external load outcomes may be a good way of uh, allowing training loads to be managed appropriately. Whilst no internal load parameters such as heart rate was collected, the authors do suggest that previous research has demonstrated that the metabolic power parameter used has a strong relationship to measures of internal load in low to high intensity locomotor activities. In essence, to replicate match demands in small sided games and to bridge the gap between training and games, the pitch size, the area per players and the use of goalkeepers are important variables to consider when planning uh, external load for training purposes.